In chapter one, we're going to talk about terrain models, and uh, in this chapter, we have a PowerPoint that kind of goes over what a terrain model is. And so, in this uh, PowerPoint, uh, here's a picture of several different terrain models uh, that you can produce uh, from the Power Geopack uh, program. And uh, civil terrain models are uh, basically represents the topography of a project. It's a triangulation network. It's generated from traditional survey data, where you send the survey crew out and they pick up the data for you. Uh, aerial data, and this includes LIDAR. Corridor data, you can uh, create a terrain model from your corridors that you create in Roadway Designer uh, through a graphic filter or uh, a more traditional alternate surface that's been around since uh, the SS2 series. Uh, you can also create terrain models from just graphical data where you select the, the information uh, with a microstation selection set and you can create um, a terrain model that way. And typically you use um, you use the terrain model for things such as existing ground profiles and existing ground cross sections but there can be a whole lot more um, reasons to use um, terrain models. Terrain models are basically a network of triangles. Three points define a plane in space. Each triangle represents a slope and typically are made up of points, break lines, boundaries, and voids. Now there are other uh, things that create uh, are things that can be created from uh, to create a terrain model. Uh, we're just listing the four main ones there. Terrain model feature spots. Typically a spot is just an X, Y, Z piece of data. Could be a survey spot shot. Could be a point cloud data point or spot. We've got some spot shots here for an example. If I'd make a terrain model uh, out of those spots, the triangles uh, or the triangulation would look something like this. If I apply the slope to them, you can see how the change of slope is different on each triangle face, depending on the elevations of the points around it. If a drop of water would land on that uh, triangle surface, you would see which way the, the rainwater would flow on the surface. And if I'd cut a section, say right there at AA, the section would look something like that. Terrain model feature break line. Breaks are used to designate linear features such as edge of pavements, ditch bottoms, ridges, and several other items uh, where an abrupt change of slope occurs. Any longitudinal element can be defined as a break line. Triangles will not not cross a break line in the terrain model. So if we take our points back again from the previous example and if we introduce a break line right down the middle and again notice uh, that the break line is on the two lowest points elevation wise. If I now create my terrain model you'll see that my terrain model the triangulation is quite a bit different than before. If I apply my surface or, or my slopes or view my slopes, you'll see that the, the slopes are, are, are reacting differently when the brake line is included. And again, if I let the raindrops hit that surface, this is the direction those raindrops would go in. If I cut a section AA again, this time with the brake line in there, you'll see that I get a ditch in there. And I get a ditch because uh, the brake line is going to the two lowest points in these points. Terrain model feature voids. An area defined by a closed shape that demarcates a region of missing data is considered a void. No point or break data located within the void is utilized and no triangles are created inside the void area. In other words, no surface information within the void is included in the terrain model. 
the void coordinates are included in the triangulation, meaning the void, um, the limits of the void is included. For example, we got two uh, examples here. One on the right is a pond, and on the left is a building. Terrain model feature boundary. We've got an example here of a terrain model. And uh, if this terrain model had a boundary, what a boundary does is it is the external limits of the surface. If I'd add a boundary to this example data here, say that white line or that white shape, if I add a boundary to that, what will happen is the triangles outside the boundary will be removed. Because again, the boundary defines the limits of the terrain model. Terrain model feature corridor. Elements or set of elements of the same elevation. Corridors may be used as source data to generate a terrain model or may be computed, drawn based on the terrain model. So what that's trying to say is that you can actually extract the contours and make a terrain model. Contour interval is the elevation difference between the two adjacent contours. At MoDOT, we currently have three design contours and three existing contours with the different intervals in between. On the top one there, that design contours 1-0.5. The major contours are every foot. The minor contours are every 0.5 feet. Design contours 10 and 2. The majors are every 10 feet. The minors are every 2 feet. Design contours 1 and 5. Uh, the uh, major interval is every five feet, the minor is every one. Same thing on the existing contours. Really the only thing difference between the design and existing contours is basically color. Or style, I should say. So we got an example of some contours here. You can see that these design contours are set to a 10 major, 10 minor interval. You can use the information button and select those contours and when you do that you can actually drill down into the information uh, of that of those contours and actually modify uh, the major and minor intervals on the fly so we hit the information button we selected these contours we drilled down into the train model the, the name of the train model is given to us there is J2P0200 if you go down to calculated feature display contours you can see that the major and minor intervals are displayed there and in this box you can actually change the intervals. You can see them right there and if I would change that to say 10 and 1 you can see how my contours got much tighter or how now my minor intervals I have 10, 10 minor intervals uh, in between each major. Other train model features that we're not going to uh, really discuss in this chapter but I uh, just wanted to make you aware of them we have soft break line, holes, drape boundary, drape voids, break voids, an island, and that's it. Civil train models, uh, their, their civil train models are stored in the DGM. Where in the past, with the say the SS2 version of GeoPack. Terrain, terrain information or surface information was stored in a tin file, which was an external file. But now the terrain model uh, is stored in the DGM. They're transportable and dynamic, meaning you can take your DGN file and give it to someone else and they would be able to, to, to view your terrain model. And they're dynamic because you can change how they look on the fly. Civil terrain model tools um, are used for the following items. We have the creation tools, editing tools, analysis tools, labeling reporting, and in this uh, palette of tools you can actually export uh, using that third icon over. Triangulation options edge method. Each terrain model will have an edge method. 
and the three are listed there. It's whether it's none, sliver, or max triangle length. With the none option, no external triangles are deleted. With the sliver option, long, thin triangles are dissolved based on a formula hard-coded in within the software. And then the max triangle link option, external triangles whose external edge is longer than the length than the user specified distance are deleted. And to kind of show you what this means, we've got a We've got some sample survey data here. And if we would create a terrain model uh, using the edge method of none, you can see that we've got many bogus triangles, especially on the inside of that curve. Uh, and when I say bogus triangles, we've got triangles out there over an area where we did not survey. And so typically, uh, a designer would not want those um, external triangles, those bogus ones. And so what a surveyor will do is they'll, they'll typically switch it um, to the sliver or more, probably even better, the, the side option. And so if we switch it to the sliver, you can see that many of those external uh, triangles went away, but we still have a few uh, in there, especially uh, down in, in this region here. We've got still some bogus triangles that are over an area that we did not survey. And so typically what the surveyor will do is they will switch it to the side option or the max triangle length option and set a, a value in there that makes sense for what they surveyed. And so um, this surveyor has this set to 100 and you can see that it does a pretty good job of cleaning up most of the, uh, the external triangles. Now there are probably still some in there and the, the surveyor can, can kind of tweak that length uh, but at some point, he's, uh, you can go too far with reducing that length down. And, and to give you an example of that, if I take it down to 75, you can see that the terrain model is starting to dig into the survey area here and here. And so typically that's not bad. And to take it even one more step, if we go down to 50, you can see that we're losing a lot of uh, surface information in our terrain model. And so probably the, the, the distance 100 is the best. And, uh, and if if let's go back to the 100 just to show you this there are still some bad triangles in here there's a few down there and a few here and what what the surveyor can do once they get down to this point is they can actually go in with some terrain edit tools and manually delete those few uh, external triangles so but that's uh, all there is uh, to the uh, this terrain model PowerPoint just kind of gives you an overview of the terrain models uh, and next we're going to get into the terrain model exercise where we actually create a terrain model and, and look at some of the features.